Hey, really quickly, before we start talking about the suspension squishy squishy things, um, if you want to help support this channel and this kind of content, you can pick up a set of Skills with Phil stickers. Each sticker sheet comes with 10 different stickers in two different sizes and four different colors. I ship these worldwide personally. And if you use the promo code PLAYBIKES, you'll get 15% off your order. Modern mountain bike suspension comes with a plethora of knobs to fine tune every aspect of your ride. But what's actually going on inside when we're turning one of these knobs? What do these actually do? And how does suspension even work? Full ribs designed into the high speed rebound adjuster plate. Fulcrum points on the leaf spring, which a sophisticated mid valve design allows more effective shaping of the compression damping curve. The low speed compression adjuster uses an orifice design, while the high speed compression adjusts the pre. <laughs> All suspension is made up of two pieces, a spring and a damper. And yes, it's a damper, not a dampener. A damper absorbs energy while a dampener makes things wet. A spring dictates how much weight or force it takes to compress the shock. A damper controls the speed a shock will compress once it is weighted and how quickly it will rebound once it is unweighted. We'll talk a little bit more about dampers later on in this video. On mountain bikes, springs will either be a coil spring or an air spring. Coil springs are rated by how much weight it takes to compress the spring one inch. For example, a 400 pound spring will require 400 pounds of force to compress the spring one inch. An additional 400 pounds of force will be needed to compress the spring a second inch. And an additional 400 pounds of force will be needed to compress the spring a third. This is considered a linear spring, as the amount of weight it takes to compress the spring each inch remains the same. But springs can also be progressive, and no, that doesn't mean that they're vegan and going out and voting for Bernie Sanders. As an example, it may take 400 pounds of force to compress a progressive spring one inch, but it might need an additional 425 pounds to compress it a second and maybe another 450 pounds of force to compress it a third inch. Progressive springs help prevent harsh bottom outs while still remaining soft at the beginning of the travel for a smooth ride. However, the most common type of progressive springs are air springs. This is where air is trapped inside a cylinder. The more air pressure, the firmer the air spring will feel. But we can also change the progressiveness of air springs by changing the volume. You may have heard of volume reducers, and no, they don't turn the volume down. They take up space inside an air spring to make it more Scandinavian. I mean, progressive. Something to take note of is any energy it required to compress the spring will be stored in the spring until it is unweighted. As we mentioned earlier, springs control how much force it takes to compress the shock. Dampers, on the other hand, control how quickly a shock can compress and how quickly it can rebound. This is achieved by forcing oil through holes. Using these two syringes, we can kind of demonstrate how suspension works. Here, we got rid of our water, which is acting as oil, to show what suspension looks like without any damping. Dropping this bottle, it was fairly easy to bottom the spring out. And without any rebound damping, the spring wants to extend rather violently. In this situation, we've gotten rid of the spring and we're just using a damper. As you can see, it absorbs the impact. However, there is no spring helping the shock return to its extended state. Okay, now let's take a look at a real life example from a basic shock. This one is from a radio controlled car. Damper pistons with fewer holes restricts oil flow. This slows down the movement of the shock. On the other hand, damper pistons with more holes allows the oil to move more freely. And this means faster shock movement. On these RC car shocks, these damper pistons control both the compression and rebound damping. However, mountain bike shocks are a bit more nuanced. We can often control the amount of rebound and compression damping independently of each other. We can regulate the speed at which a shock compresses, also known as compression damping, and we can regulate the speed at which a shock extends, also known as rebound damping. By adding clicks of compression damping, you are restricting the flow of oil while the shock is compressing. By adding clicks of rebound damping, you are restricting the flow of oil while the shock is rebounding. The heavier weight spring you run, or the more PSI you run in your air shock, the more rebound damping you'll need to control your shock from rebounding too violently. Now, hopefully you're still with me because we have one last thing to touch on. On some higher end shocks, sometimes the rebound and compression damping may have a low and a high speed adjustment. 
Here is an example of what the inside of one of these knobs might look like. There is a valve with a preloaded spring. Only so much oil can flow through these holes on the preloaded valve. But as long as the flow of oil is slow, the spring will be able to resist the flow of oil. However, once it gets overpowered, it will give way and the oil will be able to move more freely. It will then enter the high speed compression circuit. In this scenario, this is our low speed compression. By increasing our low speed compression, we are adding more preload to the spring. And the quicker the flow of oil will need to be before this valve gives way. In this situation, the other dial is our high speed compression adjustment. Here we can restrict the oil flow through these larger ports, which can be used to control how quickly the suspension compresses on bigger hits. These concepts will also apply to the high and low speed rebound knobs as well. Now obviously suspension is a pretty broad topic and my animation skills are pretty limited, but if you have any more questions about suspension, leave them in the comments below and maybe we'll do a follow up video. As a reminder, you can pick up your Skills of Phil stickers in the links below. As always, my name is Phil Metz. Thanks for playing bikes with me today, and I'll see you guys next time.